Okay, so you know how people, so you guys, I assume, if you're watching this podcast, you uh, have gone, been to a comedy club, so you know what it's like. You know what it's like. It's dark. It's dirty. A lot of times it exists in down, literal basements. We're underground people. We're mole people. We want the dirtiest shit. I can say like, um, you ever seen a heroin act? And most of you have because you're dirty people. You're dark people. And then surface dwellers want to comment on stand-up comedy as if they know what the fuck it is. We're here to hear the darkest shit. We're here to laugh at pain. We're here to laugh at fucking whatever. We're here to punch up and punch down. We don't care. We're just here for the laughs. We like the, the laugh where you go like, this, oh, it's one of our favorite laughs. And surface dwellers, people who see the sun regularly, they want to take it away from us. They just don't understand. Similar point. Uh, we were all playing. Uh, we were in Miami, Florida. And they do not like uh, jokes about uh, school shooting there, especially the white women, especially uh, 42-year-old white women. They uh, Listen, I entertain most crowds, but that specific crowd, I entertain most of them. I entertain most of them. But if you're going to hate me, chances are high you're from that group. Um, anyway, we're playing. We set up a bunch of paper cups, uh, plastic cups in a triangle. We were playing this game. Uh, me, Big J, the staff at the Miami Improv, the great staff at Miami Improv. Thank you for the socks. Um, taking a little mini football and fucking throwing it, trying to knock it off. We were gambling, five bucks each. We are in the fourth round, and drunk Justin Silver comes over, and he's like, let me get a throw. I'm like, no, oh, no, dude, we're doing something. And he goes, I got it. Come on. I get it. And we're like, no, no, you don't understand. He goes, trust me. I got it. I'm like, trust you on what? He's existing in a whole different world, played by different rules. And then he came into our game, a gambling game, <laughs> and he just says, no, no, I understand this. But he has no understanding of it. So what they'll do is, surface people, they'll put quotes uh, on stand-up comedy, completely removing it of all context. They'll be like, Dave Chappelle says trans people are quote-unquote hilarious. And it's like, well, there's definitely more to that. Um, uh, they just like misquote it left and right, and it's like you're not part of this game. It's like if you're watching a football game, like how come the white guy gets it every play and the black guy only gets it some plays? And you're like, what? You'd be talking to a woman most likely who doesn't watch sports, and but she wants to spend time with her man. So what she does is sit down there and fucking you, annoy you uh, and her husband so you can just sit there and have to listen to her try to, Joppa, just shut the fuck up or bring us some goddamn wings. You're good at that. You like it. Why, why you, I don't go in there. I'm like, oh, well, you got a honey mustard? Uh, that's, that's interesting. What do you got, a dry rub? Is that a dry rub? Just shut up. How about just observe until you fucking know the sport and you don't know stand-up comedy. The reason why the white player gets it every time and the black player only gets it sometime is because the white player is the quarterback and he gets what's called the snap. And then on some plays, he gives it to the black player who's known as the running back. Sometimes, people who don't watch football, there is a black quarterback and on those teams, he will get it every time. There is never a woman quarterback. I don't know why. There is also never a white running back. <laughs> a white running back. That so that white guys never get the ball from the black guy. Unless it's thrown. Anyway, so criticism abound about Dave Chappelle's special, which is pretty much from I haven't watched it yet. Uh probably the same uh, you know, subject matter as his last two specials. Do you ever see somebody get upset now about shit that's been around? Uh, if you ever hang around younger people and they're like, can you believe this new thing about Israel and Palestine? <laughs> and then everyone over 35 is like, no, what? They've just never seen it before. Um, uh, oh, wait, there was an example of that. Please say I'm recording. I am. You guys get tickets to fucking, oh, Yoga with Ari. Every Monday we got two left for October. Um, go to youtube.com slash Ari Shafir. Uh, it's not the right place for it. So, executives are always bound by this weird thing of going like, ah, I got to bow down to this fucking anger from the surface people who don't even understand this. And for the first time, a network executive goes, uh, hey, you guys, Ted Sarandos, who owns, I guess, or CEO of Netflix, the people own Netflix. Um, he spoke up and he was like, guys, pretty much, paraphrase, you guys just don't get how this works. This is just not... This is not that. He's actually not shitting on trans people. He's making jokes. 
And you're like, well, it's harmful, but it's like, no, that's such an abstract idea. Any comments on that? Let me read you what he said. Um, in a uh, uh, company-wide memo that Variety obtained through a NARC. Um, okay. We know that a number of you have been left angry, disappointed, and hurt by your decision to put Dave Chappelle's latest special on Netflix. Also, we have many new colleagues who want to better understand the principles that guide our team's content choices, especially with challenging titles like this. Titles? What does that mean? Why have you already lost me, dude? I watch stand-up comedy. Why have you already lost me? Look at that, how dark it got behind a cloud. Oh, it's so much nicer. Our goal is to entertain the world, which means programming for a diversity of tastes. I like that. Yeah, it's like, here's the world we're in now. That like, if one person's not into it, compared to music, where it's like, well, I don't like, well, I do like punk rock. But if somebody's like, well, I don't like punk rock. And you're like, you don't have to listen to it. It's like, but it's on the radio. I'd rather go be off the radio. I'm like, but you don't even listen to the station. You listen to R&B. And you're like, yeah, but I don't like punk rock. Can you imagine like protest? So here's the two worlds you could possibly be in. You can either be in the world of let me watch the fun that everyone seems to be having, or you can be in the world of let me be angry at the fun that everybody's having. And the only way to do that and morally live with yourself, because you're in the same position as people who like wanted to stop smut in paintings, you know, like, oh, this is smut. This is uh, uh, pornography because you're painting a naked woman or the people who hated uh, uh, rap lyrics because they were cursing or speaking about fucking fun times. Um, the only way you can do that is to have a moral high ground. That's the only way you can do it. Otherwise, you know you're just anti-art, right? So that's what they've done. They've had this moral high ground. And the moral high ground they've taken is that these jokes lead to real-world things, real-world violence. Okay. So he goes on. He said, with the closer, that's Dave Chappelle's new special. Everybody watch Dave Chappelle's new special. And while you're there, watch Ari Shafir's last double special, double negative on Netflix. Now, I would start with the second part, adulthood. I think that's the funnier part. Would have switched it if I had to do it over again. I wanted a randomizer on there, so no matter when you played, it would just like randomly pick one because it was like neither part is, is more than the other. Okay. He goes, with the closer, we understand that the concern, I'm sure he's been talking to these people, is not about offensive to some content, but titles which could increase real-world harm, such as marginalizing already marginalized groups, hate, violence, etc. Well, he goes on, last year we heard similar concerns about 365 days and violence against women. While some employees disagree, we have a strong belief that content on screen doesn't directly transfer to real-world harm. I mean, that's a crazy claim, dude who's definitely had help writing this because it's very, very well written. <laughs> That's all right. You're allowed to have help writing it, but this is very well written, Ted. Um, but that's a crazy claim that says it doesn't live. Do you have any data that supports this? Hmm. Let's see. Um, oh, well, here's one. Studies, including research from, a 20, from 2016, that's recent enough, right, conducted by the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Psychological Association, those seem like legit groups, they back up Sarandos' assertion specifically around the effects of screen violence. Huh. Well, like screen violence, have, it's increased over the last 30 years, doesn't increase actual violence. So scientific research doesn't back it up. It's like when you go to your doctor and they say, quit smoking. You're like, tobacco. They're like, yeah, but everything. And you're like, but are there any studies that show weed affects this negatively? And they go, well, can't help. And you're like, no, no, you can't just say it can't help. It's spoken like a true fucking addict. Uh, the strongest evidence to support this uh, is violence on screens has grown hugely over the last 30 years. This is back to Teddy, Teddy Sarandi especially with the first-party shooter games, and yet violent crime has fallen significantly in many countries. Adults can watch violence, assault and abuse, and enjoy shocking stand-up comedy without it causing them to harm others. Well, I disagree, Ted. You've never been to comedy clubs. You haven't seen me make fun of fucking uh, overpriced pizza, and then that crowd gets out and riots. They burned down Ben's Pizza Shop. You weren't there, Ted. They're burning down multiple pizza shops. You get to Subway. You don't think Subway cars are getting pushed over every day? It's because you're backwards and you're living in a bubble, a bubble of Netflix. 
In this special, he says, uh, uh, Chappelle makes harsh jokes about many different groups, which is his style and a reason his fans love his com comedy and commentary. That's right. His fans come for the fun, and they get the fun. Stand-up comedians often expose issues that are uncomfortable because the art, by nature, is highly provocative. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. Stand-up comedians often expose issues that are uncomfortable because the art, by nature, is a highly provocative. Hey, Ted, you, there, was a, there was a typo in that. You, you don't have the A in there. Stand-up comedians often expose issues that are uncomfortable because the art, by nature, is a highly provocative. You don't even uh, It's just, it's highly provocative. Whoever your secretary is, Mrs. Randalls, I would suggest you fire them and get them on board with starting to protect these pizza shops that are getting burned down every day by jokes about overpriced pizza. Stand-up comedians often expose issues that are uncomfortable because the art by nature is highly provocative. Do you hear that, everybody? And even stand-up comedians? Apology accepted. As a leadership team, we do not believe that the closer is intended to incite hatred or violence against anyone per our sensitive content guidelines. Yeah, sure. We've had these operating principles around pleasing our members and artistic expression for many years. And the team's decision to put the closer on our service was consistent with them. So thank you, Ted Serrano. He goes on. He goes, uh, variety, quality of the content is what members value most. Our hope is that you can be hugely inspired by entertaining the world while also giving you titles which strongly believe have no place on Netflix. This will not be the last title that causes some of you to wonder if you can still love Netflix. I sincerely hope that you can. Also, Netflix has children's programming. I don't fucking watch that. Doesn't mean I'm against... Whatever. So... Ooh, almost done. We're almost ready to start the episode. So what does that mean, you guys? What does that mean? Finally, an executive has backed up the art form, has said, like, guys, guys, these are jokes. These are jokes, and they don't lead to it. And this jump you make of, like, well, this can actually cause harm is just not based in any scientific research. In fact, scientific research proves the opposite. So now that you have science that you seem to believe in. Remember those posts they always make? We here believe in science. We believe in equality. We believe in love. Science is on that fucking, you're going to take that off all your fucking things on your lawn? You're going to take off all, all your signs on your lawn? You're going to cross out the science part? So number one, let's protect these fucking pizza shops from the animals that attack pizza shops in stand-up comedy. And number two, how about some more executives? Take note and join in. And now, Netflix, now that you've said that, can you fucking start to, now that you've made this massive gain, can you start to protect the little guys? Can you start to protect stuff like Adrian's Parkland joke? I'm not even accusing you. I'm saying, like, now that you've done this, now that you've put the word in play, can you start protecting things like Adrian's Parkland joke? Where it's the same thing. It's not meant to incite any violence or hate. It's meant to entertain the people who would be entertained by it, who are watching the uh, fucking... The, 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 the Degenerates on Netflix. It's called The Degenerates. So from here on in, and maybe even on your YouTube account, could you put up her fucking unedited? Oh, what a good idea. Can you put up her unedited Parkland joke? That at the time, you you weren't able to stand up for stand-up comedy, but now you are. Oh, you guys should put up. Oh, what a good idea. Put up Adrian Apolucci's Parkland joke on Netflix's YouTube account or a single clip of mine. A single clip. Please, come on. I passed. Um... But anyway, let's hope that this now, Dave Chappelle and Ted Sarandos has broken down some barrier and we can start fucking doing this shit with telling those people like, you don't understand this sport. You don't understand it. So get the fuck up back to the surface. Let the mole people uh, laugh at dark, degenerate shit. 